Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're looking at economic geography and we're looking, well, we're paying special attention to or special emphasis on mining, yes, but the main minerals, mined. Okay, that's our main focus for today. All right, now let's go on regarding our sections. And we'll first look at the uh, curriculum or the exam guideline, its main products produced or mined. All right. That is your coal, your gold, and your platinum. All right. Okay. That's your main products that we're looking at. Okay. And then we're going to apply factors favoring mining in South Africa to the main minerals mined. And we're gonna look at factors hindering mining in South Africa with regards to the main minerals mined. Okay, we're gonna look at those sections down there. All right, so let's get going with the content now. All right, uh, if you look at this, the three things that we're going to look at for our main minerals is gold, uh, platinum, and I'm gonna use the word PGMs here, yeah? and coal. And you can see the major contribution of each one of these. They are main minerals that's produced, okay? So if we look at it here, mineral sales, coal 27% of all sales, all right, in 2014. PGMs, 21%, and gold, 13%. So it's very, very high and significant for our country's GDP, our country's export, bringing in foreign currency, etc. And this graph really shows us that. Now, as we said, they are major contributors. And these are the three that we're going to look at and their contribution to the mining industry. All right, now, you know, we're gonna come across this PGMs quite often. What does it refer to as a point of interest? It's platinum group metals, all right? And it's made up of six metals, all of them silver white, like the platinum, eh? All right, and of course it's platinum, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium, iridium, osomium, I'm getting the pronunciation. You don't need to know all those names. All right, I'm just telling you that PGMs refer to the platinum group metals. And learners, it's nice to know what it is. Okay, so on most occasions you're gonna get the word PGMs coming across, because all this is mined in the area. All right, or in the mine that's producing or mining a platinum. Okay, so we get it around there. Okay, is that clear, learners? So we know what's PGM. I'm going to remind you one more time as we go through and we come to platinum again. All right, now let's go on. Now, what do we notice here when we look at the overall mining? All right of your coal, coal, uh, uh, platinum, etc., we will find that they are in the interior. That's where the bulk of our mining comes in. Free State, Gauteng, Northwest, Limpopo, Pumalanga, you understand, bulk of our stuff with the little in KwaZulu, Natal, etc., all right, when we talk about coal and things like that, but most of them are in the interior, more towards from little central, more towards the north, northeast. Okay, can you see that there? The bulk of our minerals are mined there. Okay, as we said in the interior of South Africa. Okay, let's go on. Now, we will look at gold and we see where gold is spread. Some of it there in Limpopo, and lots of it around Gauteng. You understand? Parts of it in Northwest and parts of it in Free State. So 
it's around again in the interior where well, these are the major areas okay not that it's not there's a little one as we find it here in kwazulu natal around freight but it's much smaller okay so let's look at gold okay we can see again free state all right Gauteng. these are your main areas northwest as indicated down here okay northwest Gauteng and the Free State are major areas. Some of the major mining companies, Anglo Ashanti, Harmony, Goldfields, right? We get major mining companies also with Anglo Ashanti quite massive also. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, learners from the outset, I must tell you, all right, what some learners do is they go and learn the figures like it says in 2019 gold sales was 72.6 million okay and then when they write a paper and maybe the examiner gives you 2020 or 2018 or 2017 and the figures are different and he said but this is not right this was the figures i learned off okay remember our subject is dynamic that's the beauty of the subject. That is why I love teaching this subject. Figures change, they increase, they decrease as demand and various factors affect it. So when I am using figures here for various years, I'm emphasizing various points. Like here I'm emphasizing that gold contributes a lot. It makes 72.6 million. Yeah, I'm emphasizing that it employs a lot of people. All right. Uh, the figure can change. So you don't learn off the figure as such, but you have a rough estimate. The most important thing is that it employs a large amount of people. Okay. Because they come back fighting. But we learned this figure and the figure was different in the exam paper. Depending on the year that they give you, they will give you tables. And then you interpret that table. It could be maybe for 2014. The idea is to interpret information and answer the questions, no matter which year it is. All right, learners? So please, these figures are all there to give you examples or, or further emphasize the point or the importance of the point like labor, large amount, amount of money made. Okay, so you don't have to go and learn off that figure of 72.6 million. You understand? But yes, you will learn out that it's one of the largest producers of gold in the world, etc. Okay, that's what you need to emphasize on. Okay, I hope we got that clear. I'm not going to remind you throughout the presentation uh, so that you know now. I need to know the point. The figures or statistics emphasize the point. Okay. I know I spent a few minutes on that, so let's get going with this. All right, so the Witwatersrand Basin, okay, in Gauteng, around Gauteng, around Free State, etc., is one of the world's largest gold uh, base deposits. It has the largest deposits, okay. It stretches over 400 kilometers covering the Free State, Northwest and Gauteng. So from this, we can pick up that this basin, which is rich in gold, you understand, uh, and deposits are available there, covers these big areas of Free State, Northwest, Gauteng, meaning those are your major producers or provinces that produce gold. All right. Now look at this significant and tell you the significance. All right. In 2007, South Africa was the largest producer of gold until China took over. But doesn't mean it's no more important. It's still relatively high in terms of its production. It's still in the top 10 for the production of gold, making millions, billions for us. Okay. South Africa has the largest, world's largest proven gold reserves, over around 6,000 tons what a proven gold reserve when 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 you start mining in an area through various methods 
I'm not going to go detail. We expect to get so much gold from the area. So it's an estimate of the amount of gold that we get, that that area has so much gold. That is proven gold reserves. Okay, I'm teaching you something also. All right. Uh, the basin, Britsuma Vikvatasan Basin remains the world's largest gold resource. So maybe production has slowed down, but we still as a resource, that basin has the largest resource. Gold is, has a relatively small domestic market, all right? But it has, it is more export orientated. So it sends out a lot of sales to many other countries, bringing in billions in terms of foreign currency. Can you see the importance of gold, eh? Uh, some major mining companies, as I told you, is Anglo Gold Ashanti, Harmony, Village. These are huge mining companies, all right, that bring in. Look at this. In 2019, the sales of gold was 72.6 billion rand. Massive. Okay, right. Uh, South Africa only accounts for 4.2% of the global production. All right, we've dropped, okay, over the years. Now, please, learners, this will be specific here. Maybe you're going to get something else that may say 14%. You understand? 16%. Please read according to what is in the information. Don't write in your exam paper. I think this is wrong. Uh, because Mr. Dave Chan told us that it's 4.2. If they give you 14, you use the 14%, all right? And therefore answer the question. Um, I know I'm emphasizing this. I know I'm using up your data, but it's so important, learners, that you do that. Look at what is in front of you. If the figures are different from your notes, use the figure in the exam paper all right so you don't have to go and learn out 4.2 percent but you know that it does contribute all right to the world's global production it employed 95,130 in 2019 the main emphasis here is it employs a lot of people okay a lot of people that can come through and work for them Okay, that's the most important, not the figure. As I said, the figure will change. Maybe different stats in the paper, but it does employ a lot of people. I'm emphasizing this point. Okay, let's go on. Let's go to coal. And you can see coal also situated in the interior. And of course, it covers quite a bit of the northern KwaZulu Natal. Okay, it covers that area. Okay, you can see how it's linked to major towns also, learners. It's interesting, all these minerals have created major towns also. Okay, look at it where it's actually mined, coal, all right? Limpopo, Mpumalanga, parts of Gauteng, Free State, all right, and also We've forgotten about KwaZulu Natal here. Okay, KwaZulu Natal. I'm gonna say K Z N. Eh? My map actually stopped that. Okay, K Z N. All right. So these are the main areas. Okay, and you can see some of the companies, Anglo-American, etc., involved in this. Lots of foreign investments at first day. Eh? All right, so let's look at coal. Coal in South Africa is found in 19 coal fields, mainly located, and can you see I've forgotten, all right? KwaZulu Natal, Mpumalanga, Limpopo, and Free State. And of course, I said to a lesser amount in Gauteng, Northwest Province, and Eastern Cape. They are smaller amounts. Okay, but those were the main ones. KwaZulu-Natal, Bumalanga, and Limpopo, and Free State. All right, those are the massive ones. Okay, now we look at the next point here. 
approximately 30,408 million tons of proven coal reserve, uh, coal reserves rather. Again, you know, proven is the estimate when you're gonna mine, how much you're gonna get out. All right, these mines are active, okay? So it's a lot, you don't need to know the amount of 30.4 million, uh, 30,408 uh, uh, million, but you know it's a lot, eh? All right, making it the sixth largest holder of proven coal reserves in the world. It's in the top 10. We have a lot of coal. The coal sector employs 92,330. Again, it's a figure. You don't need to know the figure fully, but you need to know that it employs a large number of people. And it's the third largest group in the mining sector after gold and platinum group metals, the PGMs. All right, look at this. They produced 258.9 million tons in 2019. Again, the emphasis here is not on the figure. I know I'm repeating, I'm sounding like a broken CD instead of saying a broken record. It's more than a, a broken CD. All right, in the sense that I'm, I'm just emphasizing that you the figure will change sometimes depending on the years given in exams. Okay, but you can see a large amount. Okay, and at that year it was 139.3 billion rand. So it's bringing in a lot of foreign exchange. Okay, large production. Okay, can you see this? It's one of the 10 top 10 producers of coal. Important, you understand? Coal is important for our country. Look at this now, learners. 25% of the coal production is exported internationally so bulk of our coal is used in the country around 25 you understand 20 25 etc around that okay but still it's the fifth largest coal exporting country so we're still getting a large amount of money the remainder of south africa's coal production uh is on the local okay uh, industry and it includes electricity generation. So a lot of our coal is used for electricity. Remember, that's the bulk of our electricity coming from coal. You understand? Okay, that's where we have ESCOM, etc. And this proves its key role because ESCOM is the seventh largest electricity generator in the world. That's how we emphasize on energy or electricity from coal. And obviously another big one learners is that our South African Synthetic Oil Limited, that's SASA, okay? Uh, the largest coal to chemicals producer, okay? Where we make fuels from there. And lots of our, we have actually have the Richards Bay Coal Terminal that serves as a, primary export area. We're gonna deal with the Richards Bay later on when you deal with SDIs and IDZs. I thought I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so our lovely coal here, producing the fuels at Sassol. So this is some of the significant points that you would look at, okay? Again, remember the figures are just examples emphasizing the important points, okay? Let's go to the last one, the Platinum PGM. Okay, right. And again, remember, it's PGM represents Platinum Group Metals. Okay, made up of six metals, all of them silver, white, etc. You don't need to know the full explanation, but at least you got an idea of what PGM is. It's Platinum Group Metals, okay? Where all Platinum and other uh, metals are being mined and again you can see where the spread is all right all right in Gauteng and Pumalanga Limpopo parts of the northwest but it's all more or less in the interior in the northern section parts of it in, little in the central section where this is produced okay I'm going to show you a little map again you can see the Bushfell complex I'm going to talk about this okay the Bushfell complex where this is situated, eh? All right, it's quite significant in terms of our minerals. And here it also shows you, all right, Porokwane, uh, the Johannesburg is in Gauteng, 
all right and as we move across okay various areas in this place in this bushveld complex all right and i'll talk about that now okay now look at it the bush fresh bush blah, 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 bushveld complex in the northern part of south africa has approximately 80 percent of the pg bearing pgm bearing oil uh, or of the country not oil or 80 percent is found there the bulk of it you understand is found there all right now south africa has more than half of the pgms all right of the world we massive okay south africa is one of the largest producers of pgm you understand in the world so imagine the money is being made eh? and look at this anglo platinum the mining company there is the world's largest platinum and palladium producer largest in the world so we're quite strong with platinum all right and in 2009 i'm using an old figure here already uh, sales were like 57,782 million with exports at 53,459 million in 2007 all right and what's the emphasis here there's a significant amount of exports. The figures show you that. You don't have to learn the figures. It shows you that. Okay, as I say, you'll get different figures. I'm really repeating that all the time. And for all your sections in geography, eh, you'll get different figures unless it's like climate and weather where they talk about tropical cyclones at 20 whatever degrees Celsius, etc. You understand? Okay, and specific figures, okay, like 28 degrees Celsius. Except for those sort of things, the economic geography will have different figures, eh? But this emphasis down here tells you about that lots of it is being exported. And look at this. I added this on for PGMs with emphasis on platinum, all right, that people don't know what it's used for. Look at the things here computer hard disks, mobile phones, manufacture anti-cancer drugs, cardiac treatment, implants, dental applications, jewelry. That is why it's expensive also. It can be reused too. All right, so can you see here? There's the equipment. And of course, I'm hiding this. And there's the beautiful jewelry that it's produced. So it has various uses, <coughs> which is not, <coughs> apologies, learners, which is not sort of brought out clearly. Eh? So lots of uses for it. Okay, let's go on. Now, let's look at the factors favoring mining in South Africa with special emphasis on the main minerals. Now, learners, uh, I would be totally repeating myself if I put it separately for each one, because the factors favoring and hindering main minerals in South Africa are very similar. Okay, uh, to make the factors more specific to each mineral, all right, information in this presentation can be applied. Like we say, large mineral reserves, okay? And in your notes, you already got it there. Example, the world's largest gold proven reserves at 6,000 tons. So what I'm saying here, learners, the notes are available and wherever possible, I'm going to go through the factors favoring and hindering. And if you want to make, if there is a specific question to a specific uh, mineral, you understand? Then we go and use an example that we studied. Like this, it says, uh, explain the, the large uh, amount of labor in gold. And you can say it has the world or reserves, okay, in terms of gold. Then you say South Africa has the world's largest proven gold reserves. You don't have to mention the 6,000 tons, okay? That's how would you would apply it. Okay, so remember as you go down, it'll be a nice exercise for you. 
all right? If you go through some factors, are just common throughout. You understand? Like large uh, variety of minerals, etc. It's common across, okay? Or labor supply is common across. So we don't have to fully uh, give full examples of that. Okay, is that clear, learners? All right, let's go. Now, the first factor favoring mining, the variety of minerals. It may not be totally related to the three minerals, but we have a variety of minerals in this country. Look at this, okay? All these, including the platinum, is massive in our country. Most of it found in the interior, all right? Uh, then there's large mineral reserves. We got large reserves in this country. Some of it is not even explored. You understand, we have the proven reserves, the estimates done by mining companies when they're mining. But there's some areas that are not even explored yet. Okay, so we have large mineral reserves. So we have minerals for the future in our country. Eh? And this shows you here the variety, etc. That's a factor favoring. Large labor supply, both skilled and unskilled. And you know what's happening now, learners? <clears throat> Maybe you want to take this down. What is happening now is in the past, unskilled laborers were generally the people of South Africa and lots of the skilled laborers were from uh, overseas or, or other countries rather. You understand? But things are changing now. The government has got a huge emphasis on uh, mining geology, uh, engineers related to mining so they're encouraging the south africans to get involved in this and it's working many south africans now are starting to get involved so we rely less on the people from other countries to bring in the skills so it's brilliant okay but we have a large labor supply both skilled and unskilled okay uh yeah efficient transport network road rail and Harbors, fantastic. You can see the road network here. It links up all the mining areas, okay? And we see all the harbors here. Remember I said Richards Bay transports uh, the coal. All right, there's various harbors in our area. So we have a beautiful network right through these roads connect, uh, let alone the railway lines that are connecting. So beautiful, efficient transport network. Uh, foreign investment. Remember our precious materials are in demand. Okay, so foreign investment comes in. Yet I know we must be noted that it's decreasing year by year, but still there is foreign investment in our country. And we need this. Okay, it's important as mines, development of mines are expensive. It costs millions to develop even a small mine. Okay, so it's expensive and we need foreign investment to bring in their dollars, etc., to do that. Then another factor favoring is the low geothermal gradient. What do I mean by that? If I go, right, let's take when it's a steep geothermal gradient. When I go down, maybe the temperature here was 20. Okay. And all of a sudden, when I reach here, all right, it's 30. And maybe here, if I go here, it's 40 already. Whoa, too hot. You understand? This is a steep geothermal gradient. Not good. Okay, but let's take South Africa. Maybe if I go to the first point, it's 20. I'm just giving you just an example and then i go to the next point it's 22 when i go to the next point it's 24 can you see it it's not increasing that fast so we can mine deeper that's what i mean by a low geothermal related to temperature etc so we can mine at further depth in South Africa, we can go lower down and mine, which is an advantage. All right, another one here is the significant amount of minerals are closer to the surface. Wouldn't that reduce costs instead of mining deeper? All right, reducing mining costs. Also the mineral seam, the thickness of the seams. 
All right, they have thick seams. If you take cold seams, can be up to seven meters in thickness. So we don't have to mine down, we can mine bulk. We hit the area close to the surface, thick seams. We've got a lot of coal, we can mine it much easier, cheaper, reducing costs. Our production of it is more. You understand? At the same time, we're producing more, we're mining more. Brilliant. All right, so it also reduces costs and time in terms of mining also. Efficient electricity supply due to coal availability. Eh? Coal helps because we have ESCOM, which is the seventh largest energy producer in the world, all right, which actually allows us to have enough. Okay, I know uh, you may be laughing at me at this stage, all right, because of the load shedding issues. Okay, but we do have the capability of producing enough energy. Uh, there's other situations that create these problems, but this is not the platform to discuss that at this stage. Okay, but we do have enough, okay, uh, coal, etc., to produce enough. Then our markets are domestic and international are available both sides our minerals are demanded there whether it's gold coal platinum as you've seen by the figures i discussed if it's specific here you go back to the stuff and tell them we are the so, so, so many largest you understand or we fourth or fifth or sixth or top in the top 10 tells us we have a massive exports also bringing in a lot of money so it's another thing that we have the markets which promote us also okay now factors that hinder that have negative effects in south africa one is fluctuating prices continuously increasing and decreasing goes up and down up and down that is fluctuating and that's terrible okay because the planning of a mine whether people should invest in opening up mines or making it bigger it's doubtful if it keeps going up and down and especially, right, it, it, if it's going down, it results in smaller mines closing and then reopening if it comes up. And this is a problem. It also affects employment, all right, because now you find you're closing the mines or your production is low, okay, therefore you'll have to release uh, laborers, whatever, from your company. Not good, okay. And then this is another significant thing, learners. Large distance between mine and harbors, resulting in high transport costs. Look at here, learners. Lots of our stuff is in the interior. And you can't, if you're exporting them, these are bulky goods. You understand? Uh, and you use a lot of. Uh, transport by harbors etc which is cheaper okay cheaper transport unfortunately you have to travel great distances from johannesburg to durban which is around 600 and some odd k's and that's added expenditure it takes up more time okay to do that so that's another factor that hinders okay our uh mining company mining can take place at depth deep down but it also has its problems okay it can result in high temperatures when you're going down high humidity levels and underground mines creating difficult working conditions okay and can decrease productivity because people it's too hot they don't produce at the, at the normal level they can and have levels of safety being compromised okay another factor hindering is increase in costs you know uh, labor strikes etc they want more because they're not being paid that much learners all right so they want it it's a high risk job in many cases so they want the right salary and the general in costs of equipment etc okay is a factor that is serious example the labor cost and cost of equipment in general which puts pressure on mining companies all right and of course the development of mines are expensive which makes us greatly reliant 
on foreign investment okay that they need to bring in the millions of dollars things are changing all right uh you find our miners i don't want to mention names but some of the famous people who are now got their minds and it's growing okay and our reliance on foreign investment is decreasing okay due to locals now getting involved and government getting involved you understand in uh, creating incentives for people to get involved in mining okay another one that we look at here learners is minerals are non-renewable they cannot be replaced okay so in the area where you're mining if the mineral like gold is exhausted then what happens the mine closes okay so closure of mine where minerals are exhausted okay huge problems it links up to unemployment etc okay another one is labor strikes let's see this as you can see here mine workers deserve a decent housing too wages etc all right and they have their valid reasons also all right so it has to there's negotiations etc but a lot of uh mines have to stop and millions and if it continues billions of dollars or, or rands rather are not being uh made for the country because the mines have to close down productivity is decreased so there are various there are other factors also you understand but these are the main factors that affect it again i am saying to you learners you must look at uh, if you want to look at examples or use the gold, etc., wherever possible. Okay. Mining accidents is another factor. Example, collapsing tunnels or explosions can result in loss of life, injuries, closure of mines. And that has been happening quite often over the last few years. Eh? Bad. All right. That's what mines need to be maintained, etc. Then your water problems right in some areas where we have it we have sometimes periodic or, or seasonal drought where there's no less water all right we have to create storage facilities but this is a problem or when there's a drought a longer drought like a periodic drought all right water shortage can create problems example water is used for the cooling systems in the mine or on the other hand when there's floods it can flood the mine causing closure of mines so both ways eh? uh, dry drought problems okay uh, flood problems so we always have been caught in the situation there okay now it's important again as i said linking up those factors in the and factors favor uh, to the specific gold coal and uh, platinum but generally as if i said if it's labor then it's labor for all okay that needs a large so some factors are just general without examples also is a clear learners once again you don't have to learn the full figures like 32 million or billion as you can see evident in this dbe past paper all right the dbe past paper now if we look at this okay it gives us figures for 2017 because this was a 2018 paper and sometimes it may be in a 2020 paper so these figures may be different to what uh you have in your notes because as i said it's dynamic depending on the year but you will be able to apply yourself look at the information okay so let's start looking here it says mining operations okay the val river it gives us val river it gives us an amount of ounces being produced. This is produced by in Gauteng by Anglo Gold Ashanti. Then we look at this Wits, West Wits operations, 680 ounces, 80, 680,000 ounces. Whoa, Gauteng and it's Anglo Ashanti again. So it's giving us various figures here. Okay, and the mining uh, companies that are involved, the mine, the mining companies. Can you see it? So deep. And this is the amount they produce and the Gauteng gold fields. All right. 
then this area, this mine, amount produced, the company, okay, that's produced. What else does it give us? It tells us about South Africa's production. We notice here, it has been going down, then it goes heavily down at the end of 2014, eh? It picks up again, all right, then it's going, but the general trend, it seemed to be decreasing, eh? as we go down here in 2017. Uh, it doesn't give us 2018, so we just base on the information we have. Yeah, it talks about gold producers, and we can see the largest, yeah, right, tons, China, followed by Australia, Russia, Canada, Peru, South Africa, so South Africa in this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eh? Mexico, Pakistan, Indonesia, Ghana, there's another African country, uh, Brazil, all right, it gives us all these people in millions of tons, their production, okay, so let's look at then what questions can be asked, but it's good to interpret this, even if the questions are simple learners, if we go here, name the province where most gold is mined in South Africa, the answer is Gauteng, okay, now how do we work Gauteng, learners? Let's go back here. We look at it here. Gauteng, 473,000. Gauteng, we add this to that. Gauteng, Gauteng, oh, then we don't need to worry. We know according to this information that's given in this source, Gauteng is the largest one. Can you see, we don't just guess. We work it out with the source given. Which gold mine in Gauteng produces the most gold per ounce? Where's Witt's operation? All right, which gold mine? Important, eh? Gold mine. It doesn't say the company, eh? So let's go back. Okay, and look here. Uh, sorry, let me go this way again. Look at this. There's Val River. West Witt, 680,000, 473, 603, 302, 513. So this one produces the most, the Witt company, eh? All right, so can you see how we worked it out? People made a mistake, we noticed in this exam, they took the mining company, not the mine. Now look at this, which mining company produced the most gold? Anglo Ashanti. And if we go back to our source, can you see it here? All right, Anglo Ashanti 473, Anglo Ashanti plus 680. Can you see it? All right, it's more than this one, okay? These two don't add up as much as that. And this one is on its own. Sorry, that one and that one is different, okay? This one is different to this one. Gauteng Sibania and Gauteng Sibania adds up, doesn't add up to this, okay? So you add the figures. And when you add these two figures for Anglo Ashanti, it's higher than Gauteng Sibania or Gauteng Goldfields. All right, you have to add, and if you look at it here, it's Anglo Ashanti. Name the country with the highest production of gold in the world. And if you go back here, it's simple. See there, China is the highest gold producer. So it's basically interpreting a graph, eh? or tables, or information to get your answers. What is the ranking of South Africa in terms of gold production? All right, what is our ranking? Let's go back. Apologies. We can see here. Our ranking is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Worked out again. We are seventh. All right. Then the next one, calculate the contribution by Africa, not South Africa. So we go back to our one and we look South Africa. Is there any other African countries? Yes, Ghana. So it's 140 plus 90. Can you see how we need to read our words, learners? And it's 140 plus 90, which is 230 trillion tons. All right. By the end of the year, did South Africa gold production by the uh, by the end of which year did South Africa's gold production drop to its low to lowest? So we go back here and we look which year it dropped today as the lowest. It was the end of 2014. Can you see it? All right, let's go back. 
Is our answer? Yes. By the end of that year. Remember the word end. Uh, four to eight. What is, is the most important recent production of gold showing an increase or decrease? Can you see it? Let's look at this again. All right, let's go back. What is it showing here? It's showing a decrease. Can you see, learners? We basically just look and interpret. And you can get total for this if you can interpret information. That is my point again. My point is that you will get information that you must interpret. It may be different to your notes or your study guide or a book you bought. Doesn't mean that book you bought is wrong, but the statistics for which it has been used in your exam paper, you use that. This is my emphasis on this section. Use the information found in your exam to answer the questions, okay? You need to adjust and apply, okay? Uh, I, in terms of my presentation, we have a little bit more time. Okay, so let's look at this. This was again a DBE past paper. It talks about Longman Mines own, owns a platinum mine near Marikana in Rustenburg. Recent strike for increased wages has led to a breakdown in trust between the union and workers. Okay, can you see there's problems here? Okay, that's why the strike came in. Increased wages were not happening. There's no trust between the union and the workers. There has been much violence and killing of workers. You know the Marikana incident. All right, according to Bench Foundation, don't have to worry so much about that. The benefits of mining are not reaching the workers or the surrounding community. Okay, I, my mouth gets dry with age, I suppose. Okay, they claim that the workers are exploited, okay, and exposed to safety hazards such as falling rocks, dust, noise levels, and dangerous fumes. All right, so what we're saying here is <coughs> they're not happy, the workers and, uh, and, and the uh, unions Okay, uh, be trust between the unions and the workers, all right, has led to a breakdown in their trust also. They feel people, the union may be not doing much. Okay, so that's broken down. There has been killings. Okay, uh, we here feel that the workers are not getting the benefits of the of the uh, mining in terms of salaries. They're being exploited. That things are dangerous in the mines. The rock falls, they can get killed, they can get injured, noise levels. Can you see, it, in a short little paragraph, it has brought out so many things, okay, that we could look at. Okay, so let's look at the questions. And you'll see, if you understand this little case study, okay, it will make much work so much easier that you can score very high marks. All right, let's look at the first question. All right, and again here yeah, it talks about you know, the reference here talks about the instability in the mine and the instability has a negative impact on South Africa's GDP. The examiners give you a hint, eh? It's good. It tells you, hey, we're going to be dealing with this in the questions. We talk about instability and the effect on South Africa's GDP. So it prepares you about what the questions are going to be. It guides you. All right, now let's look at these first few questions, learners. What initiated the Marikana strike? Workers needed an increase in salary. Where did we get that from? The article, all these things, all right? Can you see it? I'm gonna go back to the article. Can you see where they talked about increased wages? That was the strike, can you see? Taking it straight. Okay, other ones will be accepted also. Uh, rivalry between unions, deadlock between employer and employees. Okay, there was a deadlock there too. We're not getting through. Employer is the bosses of the company and employees are the workers. So various other options has been uh, coming in. 
all right and the need for better working conditions that's from the article that you could have got so that's what started the strike now look at this for two marks state to safety hazards that the miners are exposed to now look at this falling rocks exposure to dust high noise levels dangerous fumes where do you think this came from learners if i go back to the article can you see it falling rocks idol the dust levels noise levels dangerous fumes we're taking it straight from the article i don't mean it'll be happening all the time but you'll find on many times that parts of the answers or hints to the answers are found in the case study okay and we don't read we're too question happy we want to jump to the questions but they are there learners use them examiners are nice people also okay they want to give you stuff to lead you on to guide you so that you can apply your information that you learned obviously you have to know your information first okay can you see it straight let's go to the next question beside industrial activities discuss why instability in allotments uh, long months, long months, long months, I'm getting it. Marikana mine will impact negatively on the GDP. Can you see it? Okay, this is taking it now a little higher in order because now you have to apply it. You know the gross domestic product. How will this impact? Now you would have studied it, okay, when mines close, etc. Fewer raw materials to be exported. Can you see how we're using our information now? Whether it's gold, whether it's platinum, whether it's coal, we can use that fewer raw materials because production is coming slow or sometimes in many cases a standstill. Loss of income, both for the mining workers because they can't buy now, less demand for products and loss of income in terms of the production being put out. Loss of production, correct. Of course, you'll have to take it a little further negative balance of trade because we're sending less exports okay so now it may result in there being remember balance of trade is a difference between exports and imports and we have more imports coming in we're buying and selling less it's negative when we have we sell more and import buy less then it's positive. But now because of the mines closing down, there'll be less exports, learners. All right. So what will happen now? The imports may drop or the exports may drop below the imports. Negative balance trade. A balance of trade. Loss of tax revenue. People aren't working. Production is less. Less taxes for develop government for developing basic services, infrastructure, etc. Okay. Striking miners could lose their jobs, of course, resulting in unemployment. Okay, that's self-explanatory. South Africa will attract less investment, thus even lowering the GDP with all the strikes and problems. Companies don't want to invest in our country. And remember, mining is expensive. So we need those people to invest. Can you see how we're using the information? All the information is there, learners. You have to apply it and make it, put it in context of the question can you see the currency will be or can be devaluated created economic instability in the country when the value goes down you understand you know we recently when our rent went down there's so much problems costs went up and this and that and it's a huge issue all right there will be lack of infrastructural development which decreases south africa's economic growth infrastructure yes it'll be involved there's less money all right, less companies coming in, so less mines being built, less power lines being built. All right, so this actually brings down infrastructural development. Okay, let's look at the one more question. How can owners at Lonmin, okay, mines of Marikana mine, improve working conditions at the mine? Not, it may sound like a higher order question, but it's not, doesn't mean higher order questions you understand have to be difficult no if you know your work know how you to apply it take your content that you learned apply it there'll be some out of the box you understand and you see you can answer them okay like this look at this 
improve communication between mine managers and workers. If you communicate well, you have a working relationship, you can handle difficulties. All right. Improve relationship between mine managers and unions, because unions play a big part. So they will be able to sit and negotiate better. Okay. Better working conditions for workers, especially high-risk workers. Better working conditions when they're going right down, where it's not safe. You understand? Create safety. Put in more pillars so there's no collapsing. Ensure the, the dust levels, the pollution levels, the noise. Make machinery with less noise so it makes it better for them. Investment in the local community, especially areas of education and social development. Minds need to do that. You don't just pay the guy's salary and you're paying less. Invest in the area. Invest in schools. Invest in social opportunities. Schools will create more education, more people with skills to work in the mines. All right. Profit sharing options to mine workers. If for that year you made a huge profit, then you give them a bigger bonus. Don't take all the money for yourself, Mr. Mine Owner. Okay. And then compliance to safety regulations. Each thing has safety regulations. Mining has safety regulations. Chamber of Mines, etc. All check that. And we need to not duck that and try to do things quietly which are unsafe. We need to follow those safety regulations. They are meant to be there to have proper safety for the mine workers. Bring about gender parity also. I like this. All right. It seems to be a male-dominated uh, uh, system. But what about females? You understand? They're not there just to make the team. All right. You've, I've seen some uh, movies and pictures of, of females using those huge drills and let me tell you they they can handle it and we should not be chauvinists okay skills development and training facilities in order for miners to be skilled in their work environment so even there they have to have the necessary skills you don't just come in and rush training do you understand and then the miner uses the equipment wrongly or puts the pillars in the tunnels incorrectly proper training okay and of course this was three times two uh, that means, again, I'm emphasizing this point when it says three, means three facts. Two means the three facts must be fully explained, which gives you six marks. I know some things are short in these memos, especially with 464, but this is an examiner, uh, or rather a marker's guideline. So it makes it easier. The marker knows everything. So it's a bit shortened in terms of a marker's guideline. Eh? Remember, you have to give full explanations. Okay, well, I enjoyed this lesson, all right, I hope you did too, and you learned about the main minerals and the factors in the app, and factors promote or favor the main minerals, or min mining in general also. Okay, all the best learners, goodbye.